Hello, Dr. Kohler, and welcome to Computer Science Chats. How are you? Good, I'm good. Hello, Victor. Nice to meet you. Hello. I've prepared some questions to ask you. So first, uh, could you please introduce yourself and your educational background? Yeah, so my name is Andreas Kohler. Um, I have a PhD in computer science uh, that I did back in 2002 at Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts. Yeah. Sorry, interesting. So what inspired you to pursue computing as a career? So for me, it was really that that was what I loved doing. You know, I discovered computers around eighth, ninth grade. And, you know, I just was fascinated by computers all the way back then. And so I decided to, you know, when, once I was old enough for college, I decided to do a college degree in computer science and then took it from there. And then eventually added the PhD to it as well. That's so. very interesting. So how would you describe computer science or computing fields in general? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it has changed a little bit over the years, I think. Um, but uh, at core, it's still computer science is sort of at the borderline between mathematics and a science. You know, in, you, you may, may or may not know this, but in, in some other languages, computer science uses a different word, informatics, which is not really, doesn't sound like a science. In America, we call it computer science, so it makes it sim more similar to biology or chemistry. But it's somewhere on the borderline between those things. You know, a lot of the things in computer science are basically mathematics. A lot of things are engineering. And obviously, there's a lot of uh, science applications now and applications in many other fields. So it's a really broad field. And in some ways, it sort of intersects many other things that people do in their, in their private lives and their professional lives. So it's really everywhere. Yeah, thank you. So could you describe uh, some of the activities that you do through your work? Yeah. So let me explain a little bit more about myself, because that makes it a little bit more understandable. I, I started out, actually, as you probably know, I started out teaching uh, computer science after, after I got my PhD. Um, and then I went to industry, and I spent many years in industry as an individual contributor, so as a software engineer, essentially. And then about four years ago, five years ago, I started a managing engineer. So I'm now an engineering manager. And those three roles were very, very different. Right? So I'm not going to go much into the teaching part, but I want to talk a little bit more about the, my time as a software engineer. And um, uh, because that's more relevant for high schoolers who, th who are thinking about uh, you know, the career in computer science. And uh, so as a software engineer, what I really uh, do is um, I write good software you know anybody writes software you can write software after like five minutes of of reading a book you can write some software but what you do as a software engineer is you write software that still works after a year uh, which involves a lot more than what you normally do in a school project or in a college project so you write your code you have it reviewed you write tests for the code you test it in production you make sure that nothing breaks you you verify whether your code actually does what you think it does um, you verify whether users use it correctly. Um, you, you have experiments where you show the code to some users, but not to others. You compare how they behave. And a lot of that is not really coding or program. A lot of this is really other things. There are statistics involved. There is um, sort of human interaction involved, meaning you have to ask people what happens, what do you think happens when you click on this button? We do that at work. You know, you, you show people a prototype of your application and you say, here's a big red button. What do you think it does? And then they will tell you something. And as an engineer, you're sitting there and you're like, how can this person possibly think that this is what happens, that this is why I put this big red button there? And so there are so many different activities and only one of them is really coding. Um, <clears throat> and we do all of them. And there are some specializations. You know, There are people who are more focused on designing and thinking of new products. They're called product managers. Um, and there are people who are more focused on designing good user interfaces. They're called user experience designers, UX designers. But as a core software engineer, you still do a lot of those things as well, especially in small companies. And only maybe 20 to 30% of what you do on an average day is actually coding. Yeah, so what do you like most and what do you find most challenging about this? So let me talk about what I, yeah, let me talk about what I like most first. I like solving hard problems, right? And that means um, you, you solve a problem maybe uh, that you 
that you know cannot be solved completely in principle. I don't know if you've heard there are certain problems called NP complete, which are you know problems that basically have no efficient solution. And every once in a while you encounter a, such a problem in, in the real world. You know, it, it has to do like, for example, I actually ran into something like this. Um, indexing a database. So you know, you build a database, it has to be used by many people. Um, you have to find data very, very quickly. And so you have to put some, you have to develop some helper data structures that help you to find the data very quickly. And I ran into a problem that was in theory NP complete. And so the textbooks say it's not solvable, right? But what we discovered or what I discovered in this particular case was that our data was actually not as big as the textbooks usually assume. So in our particular case, this was still a feasible solution. We could still do it. And I proved it to my colleagues and I implemented it. And this was really rewarding. You know, when you solve a problem that everybody thinks is not solvable, that's really hard. That's the most rewarding thing. What's challenging is that you don't get to solve such problems all that often. You know, in most of what most software engineers do is actually relatively straightforward. You know, you do um, websites, you develop databases, you develop the code that accesses the databases, um, you fine tune where the buttons are on the screen, what the colors of the buttons are, whether the, co the corners are round or, or, or pointed. And a lot of those things are kind of mundane and they're important and users will still appreciate them, but they're not really the hardcore problem solving that you really burn for. And uh, so that's a little, little bit of sort of the experience I've had. And every once in a while I solve a great problem, I'm very proud of it, but there are long stretches of time in between where you just do your job and you know it's really not that mind blowing in between. But overall, it's a great experience. That's very interesting, yeah. So what advice would you have for high school students who'd like to like go into industry or computer science in general? It's, it's a good question. Um, what I often say to people is do compute in general in life, what I what I like to say to young people is do what you're really good at. You know, find out young, you know, early in life what you're really good at, what you're really burning for, what you really love doing, and do more of that. Now I realize that that's not awesome advice for everyone because you know, what if I want to do something that is, you know, not really that useful in real life. And I just want to do it because I, I enjoy, I don't know, stamp collecting or something. So that's not really that great advice. But I would still say, if you want to do computer science, make sure that you like it. Um, so start with some programming. Don't just sign up for a computer science degree because you've heard that that's you know, where the money is. Start in high school, start in middle school to do some little bit of programming, even for yourself. It doesn't have to be you know, anything big or any for, for money or anything. but make sure that you enjoy this kind of work. And if you find that you do, or if you find that you know, after you spend some time on it, it actually becomes kind of cool and kind of interesting, then you can go to the next step and you know, maybe take an AP course or maybe um, do some programming on the side. And it's very easy to find sort of a web, web design gig with some small company or some, maybe for your school uh, and see if you can actually deliver a product on your own um, in a reasonable amount of time with, you know, a reasonable amount of bugs, that is, you know, as few bugs as possible. So if you like doing that, then you can do a computer science degree. And then maybe the second part of what I would advise is once you do that, once you go to college and you study something related to computers, make sure you really understand the foundations, meaning um, you understand networking, you understand operating systems, theoretical computer science, um, database systems, um, computational complexity theory, all these things. And the reason I think that's important is because you want your career to last a long time. Um, what, I, what sometimes happens is people take like a course, um, a single course, they learn some JavaScript, and they start working in a job because it's relatively easy to get a job if you just know a little bit of JavaScript. But then that doesn't necessarily lead to the next job and the next job after that. And so if you're really interested in making your career in computer science, you need to start with the basics. Now, I, I know not everybody can afford this and it's not feasible for everyone, but if you have the choice, learn as many basics foundations as possible 
because what that does is it will allow you to have a career over many years or decades um, and you can really build on that over over time if you just learn one program language and then that program language falls out of fashion after two years you have to learn a new one that's not fun and it kind of gets you eventually you'll, you'll be stuck in your career but if you can build on solid foundations you will know that you will see that all the program languages are the same effectively they're all very similar the problems can all be broken down to the same foundations and if you know these foundations really well you're going to get much much further in, in your career as a computer scientist yeah, that's very valuable advice. And it also leads into my next question. So where do you think that computing or computer science in general is going to go in the future? Um, so predicting the future is always hard. Um, you know, if you think back of, you know, in, in the 1940s, the president of IBM said that there will never be a need for more than three computers in the world. There just isn't enough to do for computers. Um, and uh, we've come a long way since then. Right? So computers started out solving problems around winning wars and then very basic problems around um, making payroll for companies and sort of um, mundane tasks that were very tedious before. And then we started with computers playing games in the 1980s and you know, see where we are today. Right, So everybody carries a computer around in their pocket that is more powerful than anything that humankind could have been putting together in 1964, right? The 1964 IBM mainframe is a toy compared to a, a cell phone today. It's unbelievable. Um, and so it's very difficult to project that out further. What I think will happen over the next few years is um, we're going to make use of the more powerful computers that we have now to give, go the next step. And I could see, for example, that being some sort of you know, more three-dimensional experiences, uh, more sort of virtual reality, augmented reality experiences. Um, computers making inroads in even more areas of life, like I could, for example, see computers discovering drugs rather than this being done in the labs. And so we'll push the envelope a little bit further in many different directions, in the pharma industry, in the gaming industry. Maybe we'll finally replace email with something else mm -hmm. that works better um but uh, it's very difficult for me to think beyond that um i think ultimately computers will be used in almost all walks of life and they kind of already are there's not that much left that doesn't use computing technology in some way or shape or form um it will just be more of that and what that means for people who are interested in computer science i think is that they have a wide choice of areas to work on you know, if you're kind of sort of interested in computer science, but you really want to do biology, go get a degree in biology, do a minor in computer science, or take some programming classes, and you're going to be an awesome biologist who can do computing on the side and you know, help the biology to go forward, help your, your company to make more progress. If you're interested in, uh, in teaching, you can, you know, become a teacher and, you know, teach computer science. So there's, there's so many opportunities to use computer science as part of your job, not the core of your job as well. Um, and I think that's really, really great for people who are, who are interested in this field. Yeah, thank you very much for speaking with me and for agreeing to do this interview. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. It's fun. <laughs>